In the book of Job, Job is an interesting story. Job loses everything. Satan is allowed to test him. Satan says, oh, Job is only a righteous man because you've blessed him. Allow me to test him. He'll curse you to your face. And I say, when things are going well for us, it's all very good to say God is great and the Lord is good. Hey, we get a kick in the teeth and stabbed in the back, set up, boxed up, buried alive. Do we keep our faith? And it's good to welcome trials and tribulations because they take us deeper into ourself, deeper into the real reality. And deeper into God through the Lord Jesus Christ. We have to draw deeper from the resources of God. And you know, with Job, Job says, like many people, I'd heard about you. you know, I knew you were there talking about God, our Heavenly Father. But now I know you. And that's the difference. And there's many people who believe in God. They know he's there. I've heard about him, but through the trials and tribulations that we often go through, that's when we come to know God. I mean, one book that really inspired me, Richard Wormbrain, he spent 13 and a half years in a work labor camp in Romania, what was like little Russia at the time, three and a half years in solitary confinement. He wrote a very good inspirational book, in solitary confinement with Christ. The only time he was taken out of solitary confinement was to be beaten and tortured. And obviously he became so weak, the only thing he was conscious of was his heart beating. And he said, God, all I'm aware of is my heart beat and I give it to you. And he had such a powerful encounter with the living God, our Heavenly Father. Again, when I was in Uganda, I was in a cafe in Kampala, right by the big bus station. Rwanda, not far away, hell on earth. And there was a gentleman came in who was a Tutsi, him and his pregnant wife, who was eight months pregnant, three lovely children, had just got out of Rwanda by the skin of their teeth. Came back from a nice holiday in Tanzania. On the Wednesday, on the Thursday, all hell broke loose. They just grabbed, they didn't even unpack their bags, they just grabbed a few things and fled for their lives. They didn't know how many of their friends who were Tutsis were still alive. As the Hutus were massacring all the Tutsis, that'd be like the working class rising up against the middle and upper class. Just lost their big home. Their money was in accounts in a bank in Rwanda. He was a lawyer for a big petroleum company in Rwanda. And he looked me in the face and he said, I thank God so much. He only had the equivalent of $2 to his name. But he looked at me in the face and I've never seen someone with so much reality. He said, I thank God so much that we're alive and we're together. And they just lost everything. And like their family and friends who had been massacred, slaughtered in the genocide that was taking place in Rwanda. Again with Joseph, who was sold out by his brothers, who wanted to kill him because they were jealous of him. Threw him down a hole, and we can all be thrown down a hole by people and family and fake friends, set up with monster lies bogus diagnosis and death threats in this Norfolk, UK. And the captain's wife threw herself at Joseph, wanted him to commit. But he wouldn't. He fled from her and she grabbed his cloak and cried attempted rape. So he then found himself set up on an attempted rape charge, imprisoned as a rapist. And in the prison, he did interpret two dreams. And God was moving him across the chessboard. 
And Joseph originally had this vision of his brother's bowing down to him and he was looking at his circumstances and thinking, actually, this is not quite what I imagined. This is not quite how I thought things were going to play out. But then Pharaoh had a dream of two lean, sorry, two cows coming out of the Nile, a big fat cow and a very lean cow. But no one could interpret the, the meaning of his dream. And then he heard about Joseph in the prison. He had interpreted two dreams that came to pass, exactly as Joseph said they would. So Joseph, Pharaoh called Joseph, and God gave him the revelation and the interpretation to Pharaoh's dream. They would have seven bountiful years, time to prepare, because there would be seven lean years, a very severe famine would follow seven very bountiful years, and they were to store and prepare. And like the Lord Jesus Christ warns us, you know, we're to prepare now while we have the light, the time and the opportunity, spiritually and practically, because darkness, night, evil comes when no man can work, it'll be too late to prepare then. And Pharaoh made Joseph his right-hand man, Joseph prepared Egypt, also brought the Hebrews and his brothers and his family into Egypt and saved Israel, saved the Hebrews. So I say God can move you across the chessboard and you may not quite understand what is going on. And coming back to Job, you know, Job, Job's wife, his three friends were falsely accusing him. He must have done something terribly wrong and fell out of God's favour while he was lost everything and covered in boils and so forth. But it wasn't the case, he was being tested. And even his own wife said, why don't you just curse God and die? And Job said, even if the Lord slay me, yet I will trust in him. And at the end of the book, you know, everything is restored to Job. Like Job said, you know, I'd heard about, I've heard about you, I knew you were there, but now I know you, and there's a big difference. So never a bad thing to shine the light in the darkness. And it's good to go through what we have to go. We're all on a spiritual journey. So I'm heading for a promised land, the new Jerusalem, kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven through the Lord Jesus Christ, priceless gift of salvation. We cannot earn, we do not deserve, but we can all receive with a grateful, thankful heart. Spiritual journey that we're all on. Many will end up in the kingdom of darkness, Satan and the fallen, eternally trapped and enslaved. We have to choose and choose wisely whether we choose life or death, heaven or hell, eternal freedom or eternal entrapment and enslavement, eternal bondage. Separate from the love and power and grace of God. And eternity is a very long time. We're in this Norfolk, UK, it's been a 22 year catch 22. Complete abuse of power, position, authority, and influence in public office. No black panther, serial killer here. Africa, this Norwich, and Sandringham, two parallel stories. One is true, and one is a big monster lie. There's a tree on the corner there. Sometimes I used to play hooky from school, and I used to set up that tree and watch the world go by. It used to be quite interesting what you would see and capture in the moment. There'd be people walking down here with their dogs, talking to themselves. They may have been talking to God, I don't know, but you would see some interesting things. No one knew that you were there. And it's always interesting sometimes what we can capture in the moment, and that's the moment we have is here and now. Scripture says, live one day at a time, tomorrow will take good care of itself, today has got enough problems, 
So just focus on the here and now and God's grace.